City Wrestling. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Grind City Wrestling. I am Dustin Starr. Be sure to follow us on social media at Grind City Media, or you can check out the archive. Go and check those out. GrindCityMedia.com slash podcast, where last week I caught up with the United Wrestling Network World Heavyweight Champion Danny Limelight. Plus, we asked you who won the weekend, AEW or WWE, and it wasn't even close. Now, this week, it's a huge week. Free Memphis Wrestling on Beale Street in front of Ghost River, presented by Orion Federal Credit Union. Bell time is 2 p.m., and we're going to catch up with the Memphis Heritage Champion, The Gun Show, right here on today's program. But first, it's bell time! Introducing my co-host and tag team partner for today, ladies and gentlemen, it's Devin Walker, baby! What's good? What's great? What's up, five star? You see, every every week I try to come with some heat. This week is kind of light. Last week I went with a too cool shirt from like 2005, I think. This week, this is from uh, this is a, one of the crew shirts from WCW War Games. You know what I'm saying? We got the brawl. Oh, brawl. We got the front, and then we got the little back hit on the back. You know. Hey, man, Ball brawl was a great pay per view. Yeah, and I was a part of the crew. You didn't know that? What did you do? Uh, I just like help like set up the cage, you know, just casually. You watched from at home, just like I did. Is what you, what you did. <laughs> anyway, be sure to follow Devin on social media at Devin underscore Walker. Two, what's new? Uh, I got I got a gripe, man. I got I got something to complain about today. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm here. Uh, We're gonna start off with that. We're gonna start off with you, a gripe. Do you want to hear my best wrestling, or do you want to hear why I'm mad? Which one do you want to hear first? Well, first of all, let's hear why you're mad. Okay. Then we'll, get to the, then we'll get to the best. Hold on. Let me let me lay the table. So okay. we're going to talk about the best wrestling that we watched all week. Huh? Something's on Devin's mind, and it's upset him, so he's going to talk about that. Also, there's a very interesting list that came out from WWE on Fox. Devin actually sent it to me. It was created by ChatGPT, which is this artificial intelligence type of thing but it's listed the top 10 finishers in the history of wwe now i tweeted this out also put it on my facebook page dustin star and i'm going to read some of those but i'm going to go through this list real quick and see what's wrong with it right because there's something yeah, wrong with every single list there's always some with every list and we're going to find out what's wrong with the list but before we get to the list and my best wrestling of the week yeah. This is my gripe. This this is my gripe of the week, uh, Dustin Five Star. So I'm just I, as someone who takes in a lot of different, a lot of wrestling, whether it's local, whether it's national, whether it's regional. I take in a lot of wrestling, right? A lot of wrestling. Just I take in a lot of consuming a lot of sports entertainment. And there's one particular promotion in sports entertainment right now that does a great job with their matches, but everything else, I call it uh, arcade wrestling, right? It's like it's like uh spot 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 the stuff we love i love hot spots we all love hot spots I video love game stuff video game. i love that stuff the, the part that i hate that that is the video game part of it is the fact that they don't build storylines anymore and i'm talking to you aew what happened to the storylines used to invest in 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 invest and get us built up into building characters into building humans into building superstars but now it's you want a dream match? We'll give it to your forbidden door. It's like the it's like the main menu in a video game. I'm done. I I, I, I can't do it, five star. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. There's a lot of tweets out there right now about AEW's lack of storylines. And then there's this other side that says, hey, Forbidden Door is not about storylines. It's about dream matches. But I think for fans like yourself and me, we are smart fans, but we don't go out of our way necessarily to watch all the new Japan stuff or to be familiar with everything. And maybe that means that we're bad podcasters, or maybe that means that we're interested in the mainstream professional wrestling here in the United States. And even though Okada versus Daniel Bryan is going to be very, very good, there's no story that goes along with it, right? No story. Like sometimes the story gets you invested in the match, right? Like I know how much you've been through to get to this match, right? This is just, this is like me picking up the, the controller. I'm playing WWE 2K23 or, or AEW, it's Fight Forever, which comes out in two weeks. It's gotta be like NBA Jam of wrestling. Yeah, just 
It's like, you know, just like, you know, main menu. Which character do you want? Oh, I'll pick Daniel Bryan. Oh, oh, you want a coda? Okay, you pick. Oh, you want Will Ospreay? Okay, I'll pick him. Oh, can, can you make it? Oh, we got a dream. For back. example, like, there's no all story. of a sudden, like all of a sudden, Soraya is tag teaming with Chris Jericho. Even though Anna Jay is in the group. Like, it's, it's just all, it's all just like very just pushed together. And that's the part. That's my big gripe. I was watching AEW this well, week. And I was like, man, I need some more of the, what y'all used to do three or four years ago is build storylines. Because the biggest storyline in WWE and wrestling, to segue to my best wrestling of the week, look at that. I'm a professional. Okay. Uh, I am there a you professional. Go. I segue to what my best wrestling of the week is. Is the bloodline, right? Absolutely. The, the, the Roman Reigns going out there for his 1,000th uh, day of the, the champ celebration. He goes out there with the, dri with the drip on. Triple H gives him a new belt. Love it. Usos interrupt. Solo's right by his side. The Usos get you that they get you they get you invested by saying you're my brother Solo. You're our blood brother Solo. Come on our side, Solo. Solo walks over to their side. Roman gives J Jimmy J whichever Uso a big hug, and he gives him the the old Triple H Evolution thumbs down. Sabon spike to the neck. And then we go. I loved it. That's the dramatic shit we love. It was five star. I timed when that segment started. That segment started at 8 40 p.m. A 20 minute segment to close SmackDown instead of having a match. And it was phenomenal. And then you. And you, a lot of fans will gripe about those promos, those 20 minute promos opening the show, 20 minute promos closing the show. But the thing is, is if they're very good and the story is good, those promos are just as good as the wrestling match. So you did see action. You saw a turn. You saw somebody take a bump. You know, you saw this conflict. But when you have a 20 minute promo to open or close the show, and really it's just kind of, you know, nothing really happens, you've got to close strong. They close strong. It was awesome. It was amazing. And that's the part where I talk about like the arcade wrestling, arcade promotion versus building storylines, building carries. I hate it. I don't like it. But the Cody Rhodes injury thing, it's goofy as hell to me because he's doing the, old, the same thing he did in AEW. It's like, my arm's hurting. I got to fight through this injury. To yeah. fight. Like, it's the same shit. But like, it's the storyline. Overcoming, overcoming adversity. Exactly. People love characters and stories. And like, like that's the thing that got me to wrestling back in the day, whether it's the the Austin versus McMahon storyline, whether it was the DX versus the, the corporation story. Those are the yeah. stories we love. AEW, you give me five-star matches. I, I salute you. But give now, me a five-star story. I did see you at the Wrestle Center over the weekend, and it there. appeared that you had a really, really good time. So let's flip this into something positive. I feel like that Memphis Wrestling really relies on the characters and storylines. Tell us the difference, like what you see on AEW, and then and then tell me if I'm wrong. But it looked like, man, we had a packed house. You had a black. I saw you just laughing, like you were laughing your ass off in the front row, but you weren't like laughing at it. You were just. It seemed like you were having a lot of fun. I was having a lot of fun because, the, like you, you mentioned, the part of the, the story, right? And this, and you do, you guys do such a great job of telling a story because the fans know. And when the fans get invested, the fans create an atmosphere, right? And that's the part I was laughing at because those fans that, that sit by the the entrance way, they create an atmosphere that I'm gonna boo this person, I'm gonna cheer this person. They're creative with their chance. They went from a uh, main event Baldy to at main event Bradley to cheering for uh, our guy. Uh, the boss. Wow, it's like it, the creativeness of the chant, the, the energy of the chant, and then, like you said, the storylines of building characters, whether it's the boss, whether it's the posse, whether it's all, my guy, show enough, K Tumor. Like, that's a guy I remember. I'm not gonna lie, five star. I remember three years ago, I think it was, maybe it's three years ago. Well, how you've been doing this for what three years, two years? Just we're working on our th third year on, on Memphis, so yeah. I remember him coming up to you after one of those first, shows. I was in the building for one of your first shows. He was kinky. I think he was just working, like kind of like working on the back backstage area. He bought a ticket, bro. He sat in the front row. Exactly. He, I remember he came to you. It was like, I just want a chance. And now his name is one of the hottest names inside Memphis wrestling. When his name, you want your jaw broke, you want your wig split, the crowd yeah. goes crazy. So it's that's what I'm saying. Like, dude, building stories and building characters. Like, I, that's my. You guys do such a great job because people like me. Like you said, we know. Like we we we're 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 the marks, right? 
like we know what's real and what's fake yeah. but to build a storyline to get us to get people invested that's that's five star wrestling for sure that is Devin's best wrestling that he watched all week. Sounds like the bloodline. He has a gripe with AEW. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that you love Memphis wrestling. I love Memphis wrestling, bro. You know, I'm, I'm always there. I, shout out to uh, Daniel Lima. Actually, you know what's funny? I saw Daniel Lima at your show. So I went to go watch some other Daniel Lima matches to see mm-hmm. how he really gets down. He was, he's, he's phenomenal. No spoilers, but you guys will see that coming up real soon on Memphis wrestling. And I was in Hollywood Tuesday. There's a lot of really good show, show uh, shows coming up for there. I flew in to get up at 3.30 in the morning, flew in on Tuesday, went straight to the show, uh, did some special interviews. I hosted and uh, broadcasted two of the episodes of Championship Wrestling, United Wrestling Network Showcase. It was a lot of fun. Then hopped right back on a plane, got up at 3.30 the, that Wednesday morning, hopped back on a plane and got right back to Memphis. But I say all that to say that we have some big news coming up very, very soon. And when it hits, I'm going to bring a guest on that's going to tell us all about it. But it will be huge and could be nationwide. And I'm going to just leave that tease right there. With the best wrestling that I watched all week, I'm going to be a homer again this week. Tommy Dreamer and PCO, along with the posse, absolutely destroyed the Wrestle Center. That match, Devin, easily cost me two grand just in damages. I'm talking ring mat. I'm talking padding. I mean, they destroyed the place. They literally tore the ring mat off the ring, exposing the boards. And then even more footage is gonna is released on MemphisWrestlingPlus.com because it didn't end when the show went off. So this Saturday, you'll be able to see the uncut version. But it's, it's available right now on Memphis Wrestling Plus. Crazy stuff. Uh, you were not there live, but I'm sure you saw it. I saw it. It was, it was, it was wild. But that's that's the thing we talk about stories, bro. Even when you, even when you bring in guys from outside promotions, whether it's Impact, you where you you have a weak buffer to tell the story, right? Like you're not just bringing in Tommy Dreamer and PCO. Hey, come wrestle a match, right? It's right. it's it's we're gonna build this story. Tommy Dreamer gets his ass kicked by the posse. Now I, I gotta go get one of my guys, right? Like that. That's first a, time ever. Exactly. Those guys had never tagged up before. First time ever. Tommy Dreamer and PCO. That's like one of those things like you get like, okay, Dreamer has to get their, their, like you said, the redemption story. Like you, we love it. So I, I enjoyed it, bro. It was wild. I, I really want to see some uncut footage because you could tell, we know how old PCO is. He's like the un, he's like the un- alive monster. And you can see him kind of like moving around the ring a little like slow and, you know, but it was, it was fun to see because they, they tore that bitch apart. Scary dude, and he just headlined Impact Wrestling for the title. Speaking of Memphis Wrestling, we're live on Beale Street coming up this Saturday at 2 p.m. It's absolutely free in front of Ghost River on the street, and it's presented by Orion Federal Credit Union. And one man who I know will be there in action is the current Memphis Wrestling Heritage Champion, The Gun Show. And I caught up with him a little bit earlier. Check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gun Show. Ooh, what's up? What is going on, Gun Show? Hey, and real quick, first question. I've been saying that for about almost three years. Welcome to the Gun Show. Every time you come to the ring, what do you think about it? I love it. I love it. I love it. Heck, you got me saying that to my kids all the time, man. Well, welcome to Grind City Wrestling. Thank you for joining me. There's a whole lot to talk about. Big, big weekend coming up for Memphis Wrestling. But first, I know you heard it. I know you saw it on social media. Let's start with the elephant in the room. The United Wrestling Network World Heavyweight Champion, Danny Limelight, on this program last week, he called you out. He said if he's coming to Memphis, he wants to stand across the ring from the best, and you're the Memphis Heritage Champion just give us your thoughts about Danny Limelight real quick. Well, Danny, he wants to start out big in Memphis, don't he? Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I mean I'm not going to back down from him. I mean, he might be the world champ for the United Wrestling uh, Federation. So, I mean, bring it all, buddy. I mean, uh, I'm not just a champion in Memphis. I mean, I this is not the only title I've ever held. I'll be glad to take that title around, from around his waist and wear it around Memphis. I'll do all the tours for the uh, for the company too. I don't care. I can do it. Now this is this is nothing new for for you. I mean, 
pretty much every single person that comes in here wants to square off with you. I mean, they've seen you on Young Rock. They've seen you hold the championship belt here in Memphis, not once, but twice. I mean, seeing you without the Memphis Heritage Championship, it's a little strange if you ask me. I mean, Lance Archer has come in. I could list off name after name after name, but they all want to stand across the ring from you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, <laughs> sooner or later. Got the target on your back. It might, it might uh, have me coming out on the wrong end. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. Well, you always have a target on your back if you're, you know, the top guy in the territory. But then also, especially if you have a championship belt around your waist or over your shoulder. And speaking of that, we have a huge weekend coming up this Saturday at 2 p.m. on Field Street in front of Ghost River. And we have our tag team partners, Ghost River and Orion Federal Credit Union. You are going to be in action live defending the Memphis Heritage Championship against delicious van vicious oh dear god so it's gonna be a hot day so expect to have a hot gun show because uh van vicious you're gonna leave memphis the same way you came in beltless so uh when i'm out there kicking your ass all over bill street just know it's not the first time right <laughs> Might not be the last. Now, there's a little controversy going into this thing. We don't know where the Secret Service is. We don't know where Hollywood Jimmy Blaylock is. After being knocked out by Colton Cage, this guy's laid up in a local med medical facility. Looks like Secret Service are in the hospital there with him or something. So we don't know if they're going to be there, when they'll return or what. So, Gun Show, I mean, this is a little bit of a dis disadvantage. I mean, they could potentially have three or four people around the ring while you're wrestling against Van Vicious, does that concern you at all? Well, it just depends. You know, um, the the Jimmy, he's always got he's always got some kind of plan. Um, so whenever you wrestle one of his guys, you got to have your own plan. And sometimes it doesn't hurt to have a plan B or a plan C. And I used to be known for playing chess, so I'm always thinking one move ahead. So if Jimmy decides to show up, wheelchair, crutches, limping, walking just fine, because he's probably really not hurt because he's always full of crap anyway. <laughs> it's all going down this weekend. Party starts at 12. It's at Ghost River. We're celebrating the one-year anniversary of new wing order. You gonna have any wings when you're out there? Is that on the gun shows? Oh, uh, man, you ever known a meat and turn down some food? Man, not only am I fixing to beat Van Vicious, I'm finna beat up a whole tray of uh, boneless wings, baby. I'm finna take them all out. The gun show, Brad Michaels, Memphis Heritage Champion, joining me here on Grind City Wrestling. You've been on this program before. Is there any last thoughts that you want to send people away with before hangoing down there on Beale Street this weekend? Well, guys, just know this. It's going to be a hot day. It's going to be a hot day. The action's going to be hot. The gun show is going to be hot because he's got to put up a van vicious and Jimmy Blaylock, I'm sure it's going to be there. You can, there's no way he's going to turn down missing an opportunity to try to screw me out of the title. So titles on the line. Hey, I'm up for whatever. So gun, the gun show will be there. The gun show crew will be there. And I got guys watching my back just in case too, because I know how Jimmy works. And Van Vicious, like I said, you're going you gonna to leave Memphis the way you came in. Belt yeah, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, he is the Memphis Heritage Champion. He's in action this Saturday at Ghost River, 2 p.m. That's the gun show. Thanks, brother. Yes, sir. This Saturday, we are live and free on Beale Street in front of Ghost River, presented by Orion Federal Credit Union. How exciting is that, Devin? You have actually been on Beale Street when we've done these matches. Tell the fans what they can expect for real. Uh, the energy, man, like the, the energy of Bill Street. And the thing is, too, it's, it's interesting because you see so many people just walking by that see like a ring set up and they're like, wait, there's wrestling today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, 
and because cool. of the way Memphis is set up, the city is set up, when they see a they just stand there and watch to see what's gonna happen. So you yeah. might have some people that have never watched Memphis wrestling before. They're gonna see, oh, wait, who's this big dude? Wait, the gun show? Oh, okay, let's let's, let's see what he got. So yeah, the, right. the energy, I think the, the randomness of, of Bill Street is what makes it so much fun. You know? It is so Memphis, it's not even fun. Oh yeah, you, you might see a guy take Big Swole Justin Cole's vest and run off with it, which did happen. <laughs> I'm glad that's the only thing that sticks into your mind about that. But uh, the full scoop here is it's New Wing Order's one-year anniversary at Ghost River on Beale Street. It's right there on the east end, right underneath the home of the blues, Beale Street sign. You cannot miss it. We're going to be setting the ring up at about 8 a.m. So that way it's up all day and you fans can see it and know what's going on, just like Devin said. Party starts at noon inside Ghost River. We're going to film some special segments, some funny stuff and entertaining stuff memphis wrestling so that happens at noon and then at 2 p.m we're gonna actually have music and all sorts of stuff out there it's gonna be a party Devin. 2 p.m we ring the bell in front of ghost river that is being recorded and will air the following week on memphis wrestling so you guys can be a part of a very special television taping coming to you live from the home of the blues the heart of memphis tennessee the most iconic street in possibly america and definitely tennessee and that's Beale Street. But next thing I want to tell you about is what you sent me earlier today, yeah. Devin. I went to Facebook and Twitter to get their opinions on it, and they're coming in, so I'll share those in just a second. But WWE on Fox released a top 10 finishers of all time. Now, they've released a couple of others, like the greatest female wrestler of all time in WWE, greatest male wrestler of all time in WWE, and those lists were created by ChatGPT, which is artificial intelligence type of thing. You see it all in the news. But these lists are full of controversy so i'm gonna can i put that on the screen devin can i put yeah, the list yeah, on, the put on the screen yeah. You, yeah so i'll put the list on the screen and then you guys tell me what you think number 10 on the list do you want me to just go through there and you get yeah, some run, quick thoughts yeah run through the list real quick and we'll t and we'll try to like kind of like mention what they left off for the people well Maybe. if you have a screen you do you have to run through it well number 10 is is edge's spear okay. right Number nine is the sharpshooter from Brett the Hitman Hart. Number eight is the F5 from Brock Lesnar. And arguably, man, that is, that's, that's really low on the list, if you ask me, or high on the list, if you ask me. Number seven, the attitude adjustment from John Cena. Just imagine all the people he's beat with that. Number six, the pedigree from Triple H. I see you putting yes. your finger down. Number five is sweet chin music from HBK. Number four is RKO out of nowhere. Number three is the rock bottom. Would the rock bottom be listed instead of the people's elbow? I mean, the rock, I guess the rock bottom was the finish finish, right? Yeah. Uh, number two is the tombstone from The Undertaker. And number one is the Stone Cold Stunner from Stone Cold Steve Austin. I like some of this list and I dislike a lot of this list. Devin, I'll let you go first since you brought this list to my attention. And again, it was from Jat Chat GPT on WWE on Fox. You can follow them on Twitter. Yeah, so when we think about finishers, right, we think about like actual fan, like the, the the move that wins the match and like the uniqueness of a finisher, right? Because because of course you can call the RKO the diamond cutter if you want, which I wore the diamond out page shirt yesterday on the show. Bang, shout out. Well, but, now the diamond cutter, I mean, is that, he won a world title with it. It was something that, that created the RKO. I mean, it was a move that I feel like, it was the ace crusher a long time ago, but that's something that Diamond Dallas Page made famous, and RKO, you know, Randy Orton made it even more famous on a bigger yeah. platform. But if I was to like, I mean, the, so all these moves are pretty great, but there's a couple moves that I think they're missing. One, I think you have to at least put the Swanton Bomb on there. I personally think the Swanton Bomb deserves to be on there. It doesn't look like there's anything off the top rope. So Swanton Bomb could be argued. Frog Splash from either RVD or Eddie Guerrero could be argued. Is it top 10? I don't know. We're going to leave it to you. Tweet us. At gotta, have at least, gotta have at least one off the top off the top finisher on there. Because those were the most, like, those are the ones that got us going as a kid, right? There you go. Off the top rope. What about top the rope. Macho Man Randy Savage's elbow drop off the top rope? Exactly. So if we're going to go there, Iconic. I'll go. For, and I'll go because I went swanton bomb i gotta have at least one tag team finisher on there and that's the 3d dudley death drop right 
There you go. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go there with two, and then one. Maybe there's a separate list. Maybe there's a separate list. Maybe there's a tag team finishers list, and then a singles finisher list. True, but I, I'm just gonna throw the 3D in there. And if if I'm going to add in my own submission move and take one submission out, take the sharpshooter out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I gotta put the figure four leg lock in there. Woo! Yeah. The guy who who's held more titles than anybody, I got. That's have a very to, good argument, Devin. Gotta have very to good. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to Twitter real quick. Dwayne Rose says leg drop from Hulk Hogan. Just imagine how many people he beat with that. Uh, we've on. got Lang Whitaker. Lang from Grind City Media says the DDT. Shout out to Jake the Snake Roberts. That's a move that changed the game. Joe Sills. He says DDT, Diamond Cutter. Jackknife powerbomb all seemed unstoppable. So would that be Kevin Nash's jackknife powerbomb? I think he's the only one that really called it the jackknife. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mike. Taker, Taker called it the last ride, right? Yeah, he called it the last ride. Yeah. Uh, so Mike Brewer, big wrestling fan. Shout out to Mike. Big fan of Memphis sports, especially Memphis wrestling. He says he's okay with the Stone Cold Stunner being number one. But this basically feels like a list of the best finishers from the last 25 years. Leaving off Jake Snake Roberts DDT is a crime. I know everyone does it now, but when Jake invented it, the match was over when he hit it. And that was it. There was no question about it. Um, he also follows up with Hogan's leg drop. Come on, man. How is that not top 10 when he hit that leg? It was lights out for every single heel across the board for years and years. And that's a really good point. Yeah, for as much of a scumbag as Hogan is, I agree with that. I agree. When you when you saw the Hulkamania leg drop, you know it was over with. That's right. Um, and that was one of the things that I hated about it. Now I'm going to head over to Facebook. Thank you guys for, for interacting with us. Daniel says, not a bad list, but I would move up Lesnar's F5. That was my point. Move Lesnar's. He's, he's probably the greatest superstar in the history of the business. I mean, combat fighter, world champion, multiple time world champion. I mean, literally the guy does whatever he wants to do in WWE. There's no problem with it. So F5 and Triple H's pedigree is not. Like, maybe that needs to be moved up because it's number six. Yeah, that is. Uh, a, David, uh, one of them ones, man. Pedigree is one of them ones. It needs to be up there in the top three at least. I've never seen anybody else use that move in the history of the business. That's Who else has used the pedigree? Seth Rollins took it from Triple H. Right. That's, That's a thing. homage to yeah. So yeah, the, the um, uniqueness also, of the uniqueness of some of these moves, I think those that's what makes it, you know, like the, the pedigree, the the stunner. Like when you see the stunner now, who do you think of? Oh, Austin. Stone Cold. Easily. Hundred percent. Easy. Don't see? even and anybody that, that tries to tell me Kevin Owen, get the hell out of here. Exactly. With the stunner. Yeah. All right. David Spector says looks like a pretty pretty solid list. Would like to have seen Randy Savage's elbow drop and Jake the Snake Roberts. So I think that any list that we have definitely has to include Jake the Snake Roberts DDT and Macho Man's elbow off the top because several people have said it. But there's the list, the top 10 WD, WE on Fox. What's the number one finisher in the history of WWE, Devin? I'm gonna go with the stunner, bro. I think the stunner. I think them having a stunner number one. I think that that I am solid with the stunner being number one because, of, bro, when, for what, twelve years, ten to fifteen years, when you saw the stunner, whether it's who sold it, whether it's who was taking it, whether it's yep. where it was was given to him, someone at. I think the stunner was is is that move, bro. Like for me as a kid, when you hit that stunner. It, it was a wrap. So I think the son of being number one, I don't have a gripe with it at all. Stone Cold. I agree. You are, you are up there, man. Again, arguably one of the greatest superstars, probably the greatest superstar in WWE history, biggest draw ever. Stone Cold, Steve Austin, and the Stone Cold Stunner. That's number one for me. We are live, Devin. Here's what's coming up for Memphis Wrestling real quick. This Saturday on Memphis Wrestling TV, we're going to get you ready for wrestling on Beale Street, but also Alan Angels from Impact Wrestling, former member of the Dark Order and AEW. He is on the program going one-on-one -on -one with the Memphis Wrestling Internet Champion, The Boz. The Boz versus Alan Angels happened this week on Memphis Wrestling. You were there live. No spoilers. Was it any good? Oh, it was phenomenal. It was it was funny, actually. That's the part I really kind of laughed at. It was. Is the, yeah. Pay close attention to when each member, each competitor walks through the curtain and hears the crowd. That sets the pace for a match that's just 
you, you never in a million years would have thought that it went down like that, but it did, and you can see on the competitor's face. So that's going down on Saturday. Then Saturday at 2 p.m. live, Memphis Wrestling on Beale Street at Ghost River, presented by Orion Federal Credit Union. Party starts at noon, bell times at 2, special TV taping for Memphis Wrestling. Then Sunday, June 25th, the phone is coming to Memphis Wrestling. You can get those tickets right now at championshipwrestlingmemphis.com. Ringside is nearly sold out already, so jump on that. Do not wait. Heads up, on now graph. on sale. Wrestling Impact Wrestling Mid-South Mayhem is coming September 22nd and 23rd at Graceland. Get those tickets right now. Uh, lots of great seats available. You'll see Memphis. You'll, I'm just going to say this. You never know who you're going to see on a special taping here in Memphis, but we will help promote and market that show. Anything that you want to let the fans know about, Devin, before we get out of here? Oh, man, I'm, hey, I have nothing going. I'm just here every day living life. Uh, like I said, we're counting down to when we can really like lock in again. But until then, I'm here rocking every day, every Thursday on the Grounds of the Wrestling Podcast. You catch me at some random wrestling show on the weekends. People come to me like, wait, you like wrestling? Yes, bro. I am invested in the wrestling culture in the city of Memphis. I am everywhere. Uh, but yeah, I'm here, man. I'm be, I'll be watching some wrestling this weekend. I have a wedding to go to this weekend, so I'm going to try my best to slide through your show on Bill Street. May, I might pop in for a little bit. But, yeah, man, hey, support all support local wrestling. Support uh, Bill Street this weekend. Be there. Be wild. Be loud. Be loud. Just show bring it, baby. Fun, man. Big shout-out to the Gun Show for joining us here on Grind City Wrestling. Shout-out to Devin Walker, baby. E-Rock will return. Of course, he's on special assignment. And I am Dustin Stahl. Thing. So long, everybody. Oh, yeah.